and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am making a soap with this fragrance from Bee Scented White Birch. This smells amazing. It does have some really crisp woody scents to it. I love it. And growing up in Wisconsin, we had a lot of birch trees and they are so beautiful with the black and white bark. And we used to peel off pieces and use it for paper. You could write on the back with your fingernail and it was just so fun. I love birch trees. I think they're spectacular. So for the colors, we're gonna do black and white because you know, you just can't mess with a good thing. So for the white, I have my titanium dioxide. This is a water soluble titanium dioxide that I got from Nature's Garden. And I mix it in this pre-mixed bottle. I actually got this bottle and it comes with little steel balls in the bottom from Be Scented. They sell a little mixing bottle and you can, I don't know if you can hear them in there, but they really help keep it mixed up. You just give it a good shake. This is one part TD to two parts water. And I pre-make this and I do put a little bit of preservative in here because this lasts me for several weeks. Um, so if you're gonna use it or pre-mix it just a little bit at a time and it's not gonna be sitting for an extended period of time, no preservative is needed, but I do. So I have it all pre-mixed, ready to go in a nice bright white for these birch tree, black and white, you know. And for the black, I'm gonna use my activated charcoal because you know, you can't beat that. And it's great for your skin. I think activated char charcoal is a wonderful additive. So black and white, not a lot going on. Um, and I'll probably just do a scoop top or something simple on top, a nice swirl in there, because I really want the fragrance in the black and white to speak. That's, you know, that's the star of the show. And this smells so good. It, it really makes me reminiscent of the woods and trees. And I just love it. It's very woodsy, outdoorsy, but I would consider it a unisex. I think both men and women are gonna like this one. For the liquid portion, I will do an aloe vera lye water solution um, because aloe is a plant and I'm thinking of trees and it's herby and I it just kind of went with it to me. I love aloe vera along with the activated charcoal. I think the two of those make a great team in a soap. So I'm gonna get everything pulled together and get all the prep work done and we will come back and make some white birch aloe vera soap. All right, it's additives time for this white birch and I wanted to read the scent description to you because it is so lovely. Uh, it has top notes of eucalyptus and mint, middle notes of cypress and pine, and bottom notes of tonka bean and smoke. And I don't get any smoky scent to this, it's just woody and almost a bright, sharp wood scent. I think it's wonderful. So those are the scent notes, and now it's time for the additives, which is going to be our kale and clay and colloidal oats. I'm gonna put that in everything. The aloe vera lye solution is what the wonderful, you know, normally I do milk and oil, but today it's gonna to be aloe vera and it's already in the lye solution. So there goes the oats, here goes the kale and clay. I'm gonna get this all blended in and then we'll come back when it's time to move forward. With the lye solution. I made this yesterday so there's some lye lint. I'm going to use my handy dandy strainer to get all the bits out. Uh, this does have a tablespoon of cane sugar. It has tussa silk fibers and sodium lactate. And when I do aloe vera juice, I do a 50-50 split. So this is 50% aloe vera juice, 50% distilled water. That is what just went in here. <laughs> Let's get this stirred up to emulsion and then we will add our activated charcoal and our titanium dioxide. Because this fragrance does have a 0.2% vanillin, so it says that it discolors to a tan color and I want it to be a brighter color. I know it's not gonna be a bright, bright white, but I wanna keep it light. You know, we're going for that birch tree look. And I'm also not gonna do too much black because black can really overtake a soap. Um, and I want the swirls to be, you know, distinguished and not just overtaken. So let's pour off for our activated charcoal portion here. I'm shooting for about maybe one third, one quarter to one third of the soap batter. All right, there's that. And the fragrance is already in here. If I forgot to say that, it's already in here. Here is the titanium dioxide. We'll put in the big pot. And here's the activated charcoal that will go over here. And I'm gonna whisk it in 
It's very messy, but so worth it. This is a two tablespoon scoop and I'm not using the full thing. It's about one tablespoon's worth. So let's get that whisked in. And you wanna be just really gentle. You don't want it to poof up. It's very uh, easily airborne. Activated charcoal is a very fine um, powder. So just, you know, be mindful of that. And it can be messy if you spill it. So <laughs> that's just always something to be mindful of but it's so gorgeous and I think it's great for skin. So all the goodness outweighs any negatives for me. it's the next day and here it is <laughs> um i did not steam the top because there's no soda ash it is a little dull but i kind of like that with the fragrance i mean it's not dull but i didn't want to shine it up because this is you know white birch i'm thinking of a forest so i like the sort of matte color so i left it anyway let's get in here this fragrance uh did start to speed up a little bit it was very workable so you know, not bad, but I definitely had to move. And then when I got to the top, you know, I had to hustle a little bit. But all of that being said, it does smell fantastic today. And uh, we'll see how those swirls came out on the inside, but I think it's worth it. back with the lovely Olga and uh, so far I'm just delighted so it was actually worked in uh, my favor pouring this that the fragrance you know was thickening up because with the black and white I really didn't want it to get muddied I wanted them to stay distinguished you know distinctive colors and so a thicker trace really helps with that so I think it all worked out in the end here but let's see and I hope oh wow I hope we have some soapy patterns in here because I love black and white soapy patterns and oh my goodness y'all I'm a super happy camper isn't that pretty and again because it was thick it didn't muddy the the two different colors stayed very distinct and I'm so pleased Yay, white birch. So I don't know if these swirls are reminiscent of a birch tree, but with the fragrance and everything, I think it's definitely gonna evoke, you know, that vibe. And I am loving this fragrance. My husband loves this fragrance. He walked down and he's like, what is that? So it's a thumbs up from the hubs. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna have some soapy patterns too. Should I do one here for you? Let's do one. Just get a sneaky peek and then I'll do them at the end. So there's the top. And ta-da! So cool. All right, let's keep cutting. 
So let's get on into the center loaf here. I love the top too because it looks kind of rough and um, craggy like, you know, wood bark is rough like that. I don't know, just the whole thing is kind of making me happy today. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at that, so pretty. Super, super delighted with these. So, like I said, I absolutely love birch trees. Let me know if you have a particular favorite tree that you love. Um, one of the things that my husband and I have been doing and hope to keep it up for as long as we possibly can um, is when we have a grandbaby, we plant a tree for that grandchild. So. For our firstborn daughter, we planted a, a large um, white blossomed crepe myrtle for our first grandchild. And then we had two little grandsons born a few years later. So we planted red blossom crepe myrtles for the boys. And then we just had two more granddaughters born. So we planted magnolia trees for our granddaughters. And we have a sixth grandbaby on the way, and we are thinking about planting a dogwood. I'm trying to think of southern trees that are going to really be hardy here in Tennessee, because um, I really want these trees to last and be beautiful. And we got little name plates for each of the trees. So that's what we do for our grandkids. Um, I think we're going to keep it up. I'm not going to plant a birch tree because I don't think they are hardy in the south. I don't know. I might need to look into that. But what kind of trees do you all love? All right, let's get into the last loaf here. Yeah, I am not a great gardener. <laughs> I have learned over the years um, many, many homesteading skills. Uh, I know how to do a lot of canning. Obviously, I know how to make soap, um, basic sewing skills, all that, but gardening? <laughs> I am a very poor gardener, just never was my strong suit. So these trees have definitely been, you know, a lot of research trying to get trees that are hardy that I can't mess up for the grand grandkids, but it's been really fun. So all of you out there that are good gardeners and, and stuff, I'm just, my hat is off to you. Good for you. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm gonna get to finish cutting these. I'm gonna let them sit for a couple hours and let the surface area dry. We'll come back in and do the beveling and the stamping and all the good stuff that goes into my soap bars. And I just wanna thank you so much for joining me today and taking the time out of your day to watch the video. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a really wonderful day.